What's up? I'm Trent Windsor and welcome to my genre guide to ska. If you've ever asked yourself, what is ska? If you've never heard the word ska before. If it's weird to you that I'm saying ska over and over again and it seems like it's just a made up word that I came up with, you're wrong. So let's get down to the basics of ska. What is ska music? Ska music in general uses a pretty classic rock instrumentation. You got your guitar, your bass, your drums, your singer. But also most of the time you get some people playing some horns in there. You get some trombones, some trumpets, some saxophones. Whatever tickles your little ska fancy. In a lot of the older ska they have organ. And I'm not talking about your liver or your spleen. It's like a piano but old and big. But what separates ska from other types of music is you have this guitar upstroke on the off beat. You get your beats in the song, you got one, two, three, four, and then in between those you get a little one, scat, two, scat, three, scat, four, scat, and that's why it's called ska. That guitar makes the scat sound. That upstroke is called a skank, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. You also get a walking bass line. Your bassist isn't playing just one note over and over again, he's walking it. His fingers are walking up and down the boards, baby. And then you get these cute little ad libs a lot of time in ska, you know, a little pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Or sometimes just a simple oi, oi, or even a little beatboxing type thing going on. A little ch -ch 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 Here's how ska came about. Here's how it started, okay? We had the Jamaicans, and they were Jamaican me crazy. And uh, they started picking up American radio stations over there in the islands and they were like, oh this is pretty cool, but they had better accents. They started hearing R&B music and they were like, oh let's make R&B music. They tried to just straight up copy R&B, but the island soul cannot be stricken from the music. And oopsie daisy, they created their own genre of music, ska. As far as popularity and stylings, there are three different waves, okay? The first wave is those people on the islands. It's a lot slower, and this is the kind of music that eventually became rock steady and reggae. They pretty much just looked like Motown groups. They were really trying to be those R&B groups from America. The one group that I could find that really seems to define this first wave of ska is the ska to lights. There's lots of puns in ska. The second wave took place more in like the late 70s, early 80s in the UK, and that second wave is called Two-Tone. Let's take a look at these bands from the Two-Tone era. You see these guys? Well, what about these guys? Oh, check these guys out. You notice anything about the tones of their skin? They're black people and white people working together, which is pretty cool. And it was a big deal in UK back then, the racial unity that Ska created, and it's also because that's what the label was called that was putting out Ska at the time. Two-Tone Ska is kind of like the original Ska, but with like a little bit of punk rock flair in there, which basically just means they went a little bit faster. Some major two-tone bands, you've got The Specials, they were the ones who owned the record label, and you've got Madness, and you've got the English Beat, and you've got Bad Manners, whose singer has just like a giant tongue. They're wearing suits and fedoras, God bless the fedora, and they're skanking up a storm. The third wave of ska was more like punk rock, and then they were like, oh, ska is pretty fun, let's incorporate that into punk rock. So it's like way more punk rock than it is Jamaican island sounds. But we've still got that offbeat, we've still got that skank. And here we hear a lot more punk vocal delivery. People who aren't good at singing, but it's okay because they got passion. This is people like Real Big Fish and Less Than Jake. And even No Doubt, you know Gwen Stefani, no hollow bat girl? She was a ska chick before she was ever some pop sellout, okay? Here's some things you should know about ska. Skanking. Remember when I told you about skanking, how that upstroke of the guitar is called a skank? Well, that's not all that we are referring to when we're talking about skanking and ska. Skanking is also a dance, and it looks kind of like this. So when you tell your mom you're going out skanking, you're not just being a nasty little boy. It means you're going out to do some dancing with some cool 90s punk rock skater boys and girls. Another thing you gotta know about ska is there's checkers everywhere. There's checkers on my hat right now. And it's because of the two-tone thing that's all encapsulated in the image of the checkerboard. Okay, so I'm talking checkerboard hats. I'm talking checkerboard shoes. I'm talking checkerboard suits and checkerboard ties. 
checkerboard everything because we love racial equality, boy. Let's talk about ska covers. Ska covers are important, and people have been doing ska covers since the beginning of ska. Well, they started out by covering R&B songs, and then you got people like the Scottalites covering the James Bond theme song, Hello, the English Beat, covering Tears of a Clown. You're gonna be crying Tears of a Clown if you don't go listen to that cover right now. Save Ferris covered Come On Eileen, and I dare say it's at least as good as the original. Real Big Fish covered Take On Me, and it's a lot less annoying, or maybe more annoying, depending on your musical tastes. You Google almost any popular song, and there's a ska cover of it. There's a whole YouTube channel called Ska Tune Network that is dedicated to ska covers of great songs. When it comes to ska, you can get crazy. You can get stupid. You can do it however you want. You can be a horny ska band. Lots of horns, big horn section, focus on those trombones. You can get into the guitar side and get rid of the horn section altogether. As long as you lean hard on the upbeat with the skanks, you're gonna be fine, you're still ska. You can slow it down like the first and second waves of ska. Two-tone doesn't have to be dead, okay? You can pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Like I mean hard and fast. I mean crazy stuff. You can be goofy and funny. You can make ska for kids. Ska for children. You can put ska in your freaking video game. You can put ska on TV. Ska is very versatile. There's lots of things you can do with it and there's lots of things that have been done with it. Thank you Rude Boys and Rude Girls for checking out my genre guide to ska. I hope it was enjoyable, I hope it was fun, I hope it was informative. Let me know what genre you'd like me to give you a guide to next. I'm Trent Windsor and this is The Perfect Shuffle.